I'm not super comfortable putting myself as the iteration on social media. Would you do it in voice form? Absolutely. And that was going to be part of my question. I don't mean to be disingenuous, but I'm not trying to brand myself. That's just not like what my interest is. But I, get I do it. care about the information and the yeah. teaching. You can write and speak under a different name. Okay. You can literally audio on your iPhone memos the information no different than the way I do a video. You can literally use Midjourney, an AI tool, and be like, draw me a picture. Like it's insane what we can do today and you don't have to put yourself out there. You could build a monster social media, even personality based business without even putting yourself out there or your real name. Okay. It would definitely not be disingenuous when you're trying to give away good information. I think it has a chance of being slightly less effective because humans connect with humans but you could also flip it completely on its head. You might be able to create a virtual character. Maybe you draw a stick figure and that's what shows up in talks. I mean people love Mickey Mouse. He's not alive. That's fair. So okay. I don't think it's disingenuous. I think it would require some things we haven't seen yet, but I think that's where this is going anyway with AI and VR and AR. I think you can get your information out of into the world without being the vessel. Hello everyone. I'm gonna get started with some Discord questions. So first we have Just JPEGs. They asked, how do you approach the task of building a brand from scratch and what strategies have you found to be most effective in building brand recognition and loyalty? It's a great question. The challenge is patience and I think we're feeling it in NFT land a lot because of you know the pricing and things of that nature. You know, when you're gonna build something meaningful, if you think about Marvel or Disney or Nike or could you imagine Imagine if they stopped at year two or if we decided to judge the brand at year two. It takes time. Year two, I was just starting to figure out how to make wine videos of the Gary Vee brand, right? Or like the companies we work with. So, you know, I think the way I think about it is you need to be relevant to people around their interests. Um, you need to be in the places where their eyes are and there's a lot of ways to go about it. And I think for me personally, I try to pay attention to where's the attention of the end consumer and how do I fill that with something of value? And I think that's a very big focus of mine and a lot of the character development, the voice development, it just takes time. Like, you know, I read all the discords, I read all the tweets and I'm empathetic for people like, where is this, where is that? And it's like rushing into brand building is very, very, very scary and you see a lot of brands only live for a year or two. Like what are the different difference between Shopkins, which is like a three year phenomenon, versus the Smurfs, which is like a couple decades, versus Spider-Man, right? Like there's all these variables of like brand building. And so, you know, I think it's about relevance, it's about different distribution forms, and as an emerging trend, and now all of a sudden, the video game vulture is on Twitch for 20 hours a day producing, like there's just so much going on in this brain (laughs) and this organization and it's real. We're really excited about character development. It's gonna require character development, right? There's only two things here. There's the community we're building through utility, conferences, virtual this right now and what happens going forward and then there's character development. You can only win on it's valuable for its access virtually in real life or you're one of the 1% and people fell in love with Patient Pig, right? The trading card thing, if you really think about IP development, I would tell all of you that the trading card thing, the compete and collect in the series one, has been a very sneaky good thing. Like there have been many people who've entered the BeFriends universe through the trading cards without even knowing about the NFTs. That's an opportunity. So these are things that I'm excited to be thinking about. Awesome, makes sense, thank you. Our next question is from Fig136. They say, as an investment platform, podcast building has been an effective way of allowing us to discuss wider range of topics and content building and great exposure. But we are having a harder time getting big names, how do you maintain momentum? Is it okay to have smaller personalities or does that dilute the brand? The smaller personalities does not dilute the brand. Everybody starts somewhere. WrestleMania was the culmination of a lot of shows that didn't have sellouts in small arenas. Super Bowl one did not sell out. Just because you started small doesn't mean you end small, right? Wine Library TV had 86 viewers. The first guests were small. And the other thing is ask more big guests to be on, right Fig? Ask 100 A-listers a day on DM and LinkedIn to come and be on your show, right? So somebody's gonna say yes and then that starts the beginning of bigger names being on your show. Love that, thank you. Our next question comes from Emil Japan. He is starting a podcast called Tokyo Expat Dads where foraging dads in Japan discuss their experiences with fatherhood. He asks, what are some effective marketing strategies that he could use to grow and promote the podcast and reach his target audience? I've been so consistent about this. Nobody wants to do it, but it is jab, 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 right hook, and it is why I'm writing jab, 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 left hook, and it is the content pyramid that I put out, and I see the faces smiling and head and nodding. Everyone knows what I'm gonna say. It's just hard to do. 
right? Uh, I just hurt my back because I know sitting for 12 hours a day and 15 hours a day during COVID was gonna be bad, but I still did it and now I'm paying the price, Jack. You see me walking around the office. I knew what to do, don't sit. Get a standing desk, but I didn't do it. And now I'm fucked. Now that's why I got the gift go chair and so I'm fired up. I'm gonna be fucking perfect soon. But you know, so the answer to that question is as many pieces of social media content as humanly possible that is smart also and grounded in what works on TikTok, what works on Facebook, what works on Instagram, YouTube shorts, Facebook reels, two of my favorite things right now. And you know, we've been pretty consistent about that. Last but not least, we have another question from Just JPEGs. I really like this question. They asked, what's the difference about building brands in 2023 than 2019? A bigger reliance on organic social media and less on paid media social media. That's the big one that stands out. And that the world is more cynical and unhappy as a whole. There's a lot of global tension, Russia, America, America's political climate has been really difficult. Incredible levels of judgment in our society. Boomers this, Gen Z that, Republicans this, Democrats that, like just a lot of, this is what has me so motivated for VFriends, like putting good into the world. Like when I wrote that text, I don't know how many of you are on my text platform here. Like writing that text this morning, I, I wish you felt the energy that was going through my body on like how I had to write that text. Jack, the world is more cynical. The world is more on tilt. The world's more angry, the world's more entitled, the world is more judgmental. And so the other thing that's challenging is navigating through cancel culture and unhappiness. It's harder. It was hard in 19, it's harder in 23 overall. And then in the micro, just being great at the tactics of organic social. And that's right, Matty H. That's why like, I, feel very, I feel very obligated for a million reasons. I wanna put more positivity into the world. I want this project to do well. I want it to do well for all of you. I wanted to do well for my legacy. Like, I'm very motivated. There's a lot to be motivated by with be friends. And I also think it's a complicated world. Like, I think accountable ant is just as important as compassionate catfish, right? We gotta find that balance. I promise all of you that there's many days that I dream that I, my DNA was more like, I'm just gonna be a surfer and live on $14,000 a year. There's an awful lot of romance with that model. So, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of ways to live life. Uh, sleep is great, Matt. I sleep eight hours a day. I just like being effective when I'm awake if I'm talking big game. Very true. Actually, we have one more Discord question from Just JPEGs again. They they were coming out with some fire questions today. And then we'll go into the live Q&A. They asked, what tools do you hope to build for VFriends as a business by 2033? I'm not sure, but like VaynerWatt was a big deal. You know, building the TV production company to then be able to JV with Animation Studio. Like I wanted to go for the jugular there. Animation is huge. Look, I think of this as a collectible brand and an IP brand and I just have a lot of, the tools I need to build need to enhance those realities and then I love the fact that this is the blockchain, right? I love the fact that you can add utility at any time. Like the Mint Mink was not on anybody's radar, series two, and then there's utility. And one of the biggest mistakes I've made in running this is creating new expectations after delivering on the initial expectation. That was a huge, huge headache for no reason. So these days I'm trying to be more thoughtful because I don't want anyone here speculating on my words. I really don't. But I can't not also over communicate like, I'm not done with VFriends after next year and VCon's done and all the access is done and it's done. Like, and I want to continue to like build things and you know, so I'm, I'm in it, you know? That's great, thank you so much. I'm gonna hand over the keys to Daniel and uh, do some live Q&A. Perfect, thank you, Jules. Get right into Q&A. We got a lot of hands. Thank you all for coming up here. I want to start with Michelle. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us. Go ahead and unmute if you have a question. Hi, hi everyone and hi, Gary. Hi. I was just wondering, how do you manage, I'm not sure if you deal with this, but how do you manage imposter syndrome when you're trying to break out in Web3? It's a highly competitive space. And on the same note, how do you deal with a comparison, which I hate, but it's just a natural kind of feeling at times. You know, Imposter syndrome is a pretty word for insecurity. Like, I think we need to kill imposter syndrome as a word because it's putting makeup on something we should get to the root of. How do I deal with insecurity? The same way everyone does. I either push it way down and it becomes a cancer or I get more vulnerable and over communicate about it and or practice making myself uncomfortable to get over it. I didn't like flying as As a kid, I was scared. I fly more than almost anybody now. (laughs) You know, I struggled with candor my whole life without even realizing it. Once I realized it, I started to address it. So much so I wrote a whole book about it, right? So, you know, I think we have to deal with it head on. Even the concept of imposter syndrome scares me because it makes it 
a little bit more thoughtful when imposter syndrome is, is insecurity. I am insecure that I don't belong and these people are better than me. How do you get over that? You practice. You practice the skill and you practice losing and you deploy patience and realize, for me, like with entrepreneurship, I don't feel like an imposter because I've been doing it for 42 years. But how do I deal with like, if everyone's like, if this group was all hanging out and we were like, let's all go skydiving, how would I handle the fact that I'd be scared to do that? I would say, hey, I'm scared of hunt. I don't like that kind of stuff. And then all of you would be like, no, 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 Gary, you can do it. And then I would decide if I want to try and this time is the time that I break through that fear. As far as comparison, that one I've never really struggled with, mainly because I've always had a pretty good sense of nobody else's life is my life. And I also don't think that we know what's going on in people's lives, right? Like, it may look good, but it might not be good, right? And people, you know, I'm a public figure. People have all sorts of judgments on me, but they don't know my truth. And even people close to me don't know fully everything. The only person on this call for every person that fully knows everything is you yourself. And so, you know, I just wouldn't compare because there's nothing healthy about it. Comparison is just an action based on your insecurity. It, like, here's, you know what I would say? Here's an analogy that might help you. Do you remember like, I don't know if you ever had zits or acne. Of course. Yeah, of course, most people, I had some friends that didn't, <laughs> which was pretty amazing. Anyway, like, you know, in seventh grade, sixth grade, ninth grade, like you're so worried if you have a massive zit in the middle of your forehead going to school. If you really look back, nobody, most people didn't say anything because they were scared about their own zit that day. And the ones that did, they were hurting the most because they were so scared they picked on you so no, you never picked on them. So I would just like deploy compassion on this. Everyone's got shit. Yeah, I have to say, I don't, I, I typically try not to compare. Um, I, I love to see other people succeed. So I'm not one where I, I'd rather I succeed than them. It's just from a career perspective where I know I can add a lot of value and I do in Web 2, how do I translate that to Web 3 when it's so competitive? Web 2, everything's competitive. Yeah, but in Web 3, I feel like it's it's in your face a bit more. Because you know, it's, because, in your because, face, it's still small. Because Web, like, Web 3 is small and very greed oriented at the current moment, but it won't be forever. Web 2 was delusional in the reverse way. Do you know what Web 2 looked like in 2005? Every single person working on every app thought that they were gonna create nirvana. Yeah. You're just either lacking patience, which is okay, because it's easier to have patience in different cycles of your life. So maybe you're like, man, why was I patient then? Well, because you had more time, life was different, you know? I would just stick to what worked for you, close your eyes for five years, don't have a single feeling about any of this for five years, then pick up your head and decide if you want to still be frustrated or curious or worried about it. Like, just put down the work. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Michelle. I'm gonna hand the mic over to Sam. Sam, thanks so much for joining. You can go ahead and unmute. Hello, everyone. Appreciate your time. And Gary, thank you for your time too. I'll, I'll keep my mind brief here. I actually put something in the Discord channel yesterday as well. And one of the biggest things that not just the friends, but Gary, your message over the years has helped me with is community. And that's the biggest thing. Obviously, I'll always commend you and your team on and the supportive nature on that. And I joined these calls and they've brought me a lot of things. I attended VCon, look forward to attending it this year as well. Thank you. Um, I feel like I've taken so much from your message and from the community. So I put a message in the Discord yesterday uh, and I wanted to just share it here. It's less of a question so we, we can move through it quick as needed, but more so just offering up. I co-founded a creative agency over here in LA five years ago. I have the fortune of having 30 employees. It's a modest, I guess, a small to medium sized business. So I wanted to open it up to the other hawks here. If there's anything that Gary's time I appreciate is limited, I'm not saying I'm the biggest expert in the space, but I wanted to open up my offering as well. If there's anyone that wanted to reach out for any sort of social media support or advice, I know we've had questions here around imposter syndrome. And I think the more we can come together as a community and support each other with expertise and I've won awards and bits and pieces and on my own journey as well. But I wanted to offer that up to all of the other. Sam, you should, well. you should, um, you should absolutely put your email in the chat right now. A lot of people already replied and that's Beautiful of you and that's wonderful. No doubt, I appreciate that. Thank you, Gary. Cheers. Thanks so much, Sam. All right, we're gonna hand it over to- And by the way, I see a lot of people said Discord, Discord, like I think you know for me consistently, I'm gonna want people to do email over Discord DMs because I'm petrified still to this day. Let's keep it going. Hey there, my name's Emily. My husband actually owns the NFT, so he's doing a leadership retreat with his team today, so I have the benefit of, of seeing all of you, so. It's awesome, um, welcome, 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 Emily. Thank you so much, so I have about, 
two-part question that I'll try to be really brief in giving you the background on. But the basics are that I'm a physician assistant and I love what I do. I feel very grateful that I've found a career that suits me and that I absolutely love. But I also feel that I have a little bit of entrepreneurial desire and I feel like I figured I know what my passion is and I know the problem that I want to solve. And that's around the lack of health literacy in our culture. So yes. ultimately, just like financial literacy, agreed. health literacy is essentially understanding how your body works, your medical conditions, how pharmaceuticals work, the whole gamut. And our medical system doesn't do a great job of addressing this. And, so, and, and food and environment and chemical, there's so much to this. And I'm like su- such a buyer that even my own journey with my bad back, like, like it's been insane how much more, like all the experts have come in and they were blown away by how much I knew because I spent the last 10 years learning and, it was, and I just realized it was gonna be, a, the left side was broken, now it's the right side, but it becomes like a different thing of like what's really happening. And so there's a, between food and environment and behavior and the body and I, I love that. So go ahead. Thank you, yeah, it's a, it's a really complex problem at the end of the day, but it's something that affects everyone, whether you care for it too or not. And ultimately, I think that we don't begin learning until there's something very wrong. Correct. And so what I want to do is create iterations of education that help begin to build the foundation of understanding how your body works. Have you, you have you considered it. starting the journey by putting out as much social media content about your insights as possible? Yes, so that is the second part of my question. So I'm not super comfortable putting myself as the iteration on social media. Would you do it in voice form? Absolutely, and that was gonna be part of my question. I don't mean to be disingenuous, but I'm not trying to brand myself. That's just not like what my interest is. I get it. But I do care about the information and the teaching. So then then you can write it on, you can write and speak under a different name. You can literally audio on your iPhone memos the information no different than the way I do a video and mm-hmm. you can post it. You could literally use Mid Journey, an AI tool and be like, draw me a picture. Like, like, it's insane what we can do today and you don't have to put yourself out there. You could build a monster social media and even personality based business without even putting yourself out there or your real name. Okay. And you, 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 you could even, you could. Less effective I'd, and like disingenuine. I, it would definitely not be disingenuine. You're trying to give away good information. I think it has a chance of being slightly less effective because humans connect with humans, but you could also flip it completely on its head and could super win, but you might be able to create a virtual character. Maybe you draw a stick figure and that's what shows up in talks and now the stick figure, I mean, people love Mickey Mouse. He's not alive. That's fair. So okay. so I think, I don't think it's disingenuous. I think it would require some things we haven't seen yet, but I think that's where this is going anyway with AI and VR and AR and so I think you can get your information into the world without being the vessel. As a matter of fact, I would argue that that was a big part of VFriends for me. I want my information into the world. I'm not the perfect vessel for a lot of people. A lot of people here have friends and relatives who don't like me because I'm too New Jersey. They don't like the way I communicate, but the message would be very powerful for them. And if Patient Panda needs to deliver the message and not Gary Vee, I'm for it. Absolutely. Okay, great. That's fabulous to hear. Very good idea. Thank you. And the other portion of it would be, is there anything that you suggest to, I don't know, get my creativity flowing a little bit more in iterations of things that that I can do other than just creating social media? I can definitely do that. Create. Creating some children's books. Creating social media is the single most effective way to get messages into the world. Okay. And everyone says the same sentence you said. Gary, what else can I do instead of just creating social media? And I'm like, I don't even think I'm good at creating social media right now. So think about how far away I think everyone is. All right, cool, thank you. You got it. I'm gonna hand the mic over to Roger. Roger, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, thanks guys. I was gifted this access from E22. And I just wanted to share an idea, a creation I had, piggybacking Mike's sunflower seed idea with Gary. So it's, I actually also use sunflower seeds to quit smoking cigarettes. It's been about a year and I came up with, it's been on my mind since I came up with this concept jar and then got help from the community actually to create a real 3D model of it, which where it's like a spittoon to help the experience become more fun, but more considered as well. Yep. A space to hide your seeds on the inside and also a space to spit them to keep the shells from being a mess. I like this it. This is a bigger print, but I figured on shelf, it could help stand out and be a new way to experience sunflower seeds. I like that, bro. That's really- 
That's awesome, bro. That's super clever. You should build a one-page Shopify for that and see if there's interest in the world. 100%. Sweet, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, good luck. It's awesome, brother. It's so cool. So cool. Awesome. Thanks so much, Roger. And, I, and Raj, I do think you need to make the product as small as humanly possible. Like, I think the world this is like, the yeah. First try. Of course, of course, and I know that. Yeah, it's, we could get a lot smaller, so it's more like a shelf life, so it stands out on a shelf. It's cool, man. Good stuff. I definitely have that problem. I, w- I would eat way more sunflower seeds if I had something like that, because I'm a. F- it's a mess. And that's kind of why what made consider it pop in the head because it's such a mess, and it's like it almost feels rude to be doing it in front of someone. It's kind of like smoking. That's why it honestly helped quit. And I get it, brother. It's funny. It's kind of. Uh, it makes me realize why I like sunflower seeds when I take long road trips. Like being able to roll down the window in the summer and the spring and just spit out the seeds is like, like. Like just such a good addition to the experience because it's tough, you know? All right, cool, let's keep going. That's how I spent my ride to the Nationals. I love it. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Roger. We're gonna move over to RJ. RJ, thanks so much for joining us, man. I joined right for the last call. I'm a music composer, songwriter. I've been writing music for brands for the last decade or so in Southeast Asia and in Europe. And it's been a pretty cushy job for the last decade. I've had a steady stream of clients, but obviously most of my work has been in like the traditional 15, 30, 60 second format. Yep. And to be honest, I'm a mate. Work has still been coming in. But in the last year or so, I can tangibly like taste that the legs are running out, budgets are dropping. And I think in like a few years, a lot of my clients are going to be out of business. So it's dawning on me now that like if I don't go all in into a different direction, I'm probably going to have to start over. Is there any advice you could offer me in terms of like a B2B creative and how I could position myself? Just start building relationships with companies that look like mine. Because we still need music. We're just making two minute, 13 uh, second videos not 15s. Right. So don't think about the container that you're putting it in, traditional agencies and 15, 30s and 60s. Think about the skill you have and putting it into new containers. Gotcha. And on that side note, I'm gonna be writing a load of songs for V friend characters and I hope I could get them to you. I love that brother. Looking forward to those emails. Thank you. We're moving over to Jay. Jay, thanks so much for joining. Hey, thanks for having me. I just wanted to say thank you to uh, Big Fish Benny. He's the one who gave me the opportunity to be on this call, so really, really appreciate it. He's on here, walking around the golf course. You see him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good. Uh, Go ahead, brother. Enjoying his time in the sun there. Go ahead. But yeah, VCon 22 was life-changing, gave me a lot of opportunities, revenue, inspiration for things. Currently, I work as part of his editing team as well, And but I have you know filmmaking in my DNA. I've made a short film every year since 2014. You know, I just wanted to see how I can leverage that storytelling skill into getting clients that way, right? Like currently I just get content and I'm chopping it up. But if I want to be involved in the ideation, the scripting, the storytelling. How much do you, how much, how much, yeah. How much do you post on LinkedIn? Zero. Post three times a day on LinkedIn. You know, all of your films. If you made a film since 2014, you've got 10 films, eight films, nine films, whatever the math is. You should probably post 50 times about each film and break it down. The thinking, the creativity, why you shot it this way. You have like a year's worth of content just posting about your thinking of this film. One LinkedIn post goes viral on the way you thought about the human condition around patience and this is why you did it or the human con- or or why brands aren't doing like it could be anything could be the single leader to changing the course of your career. Okay. Hey. Look what Raj just said in the comments. Jay, I've been following lots of editors on TikTok on how to create an edit. Not sure if you've tried that, right? Like, people want to consume your craft. If you're not talking, you know, you know what it is, right? Like, you just gotta actually go there. But for you specifically, the amount of jobs being created and opportunities and career changes being created on LinkedIn by one single LinkedIn post is profound. Okay, and, that, and that's gonna be helpful to switch and like add, add that leverage from editing to adding storytelling as a skill. Just talk about the films, talk about the storytelling. Yeah, if you're like, let me tell you, yeah, if you write four paragraphs on let me tell you how I thought about the storytelling of this film and then put hashtag advertising, marketing, creative, you know, strategy, creative director, like, yeah, awesome. Great, thank you. You got it. But again, back to patience, like it might be your 119th post that delivers on the promise I just created. And 99% of people will quit after 26. Well, we got we got some of these these characters to keep us, well, some of these characters to keep us inspired. Motivated, my man. Going. Yeah, let's go. Amazing, thank you, Jay. We're gonna move it over to Raj. Raj, thanks again for joining us. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks, uh, hey, hey Hawks. I got to meet a lot of you over the last year, but I haven't really spoken on, on the call. So Gary, nice to meet you. I have uh, recently teamed up with a uh, soccer coach here locally where I live in Vancouver, who is like 
phenomenal at what he does. Like he's just the most amazing thing I've ever seen. He's European trained, etc. But very different. Uh, as you may probably already know as well, the World Cup just got announced out here in North America in in, um, in four years. I was around in uh, 2006 when we got the Olympic bid, and I was part of that bid process. So I know what's coming for the next four years. I know what's going to happen once the World Cup arrives and what's going to happen post. And we've already seen an explosion in the game here. My question is, I traditionally worked with uh, business owners like him who are very, very good at what they do, but maybe not so great at the business end. But traditionally, they've gotten to where they can't scale anymore. They're at their peak, what they can do, and they're just good at what they do. I'm in a situation where this individual, who's a local sports academy, but I have a much bigger vision of where I can take this, and I know that sounds arrogant, but... No, it's just, um, it's how you see it. And my question is simply, how much time, there's only so much time, effort, and energy you can split apart. Yep. And uh, putting it all into branding, marketing, and and delivering a story, because I come from the Gary Vee world of marketing. I'm worried we're going to go too fast and not be able to, frankly, keep up, as overly confident as that sounds. You mean that you're going to be so effective at the marketing that he can't actually execute against the operations of the demand? Correct. Yes. Well, then there's only two ways to do that. One, hold on to that demand with a waiting list environment where you can really like grow into the demand, which if you are smart, like a Rayos restaurant and other places, you can actually hold it. Where it doesn't seem sloppy, it sounds, it seems strategic. Or number two, you get him to realize he might need a third person, which is like a COO, who's actually capable. Like that's the, that's the hidden secret of me. Like I took a company from an idea to 1,700 people globally in a very short period of time because I'm actually an operator too. And so maybe you're also an operator and not just a marketer or maybe you bring a third person to the table because clearly and rightly, and I get it because I've been around, the creator, the creative, the magic can't do the marketing or the ops. So you can either create the you know waiting list or you can step in and do ops too or you can bring a third partner to the table and have them be ops. And then you can keep up with the demand. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I do, I do play that role as well um, as an operator. Well, then, uh, then it just becomes a capital game, right? Can you hire as fast as the money's coming in from the demand creation? But then you can do all sorts of things. You can start marketing now and say it's starting in September and create a pre-sale price where people have to leave a full payment now to get it at a $200 price less and now you've got the cash you need or you can raise capital. Fair. You Excellent. got it. Awesome, thank you. You got it, brother. Thanks so much, Raj. All right, let's move over to Benny Fisher. Good to see you, my man. It's been a while. Looks like you're in paradise over there. Yeah, I'm down uh, down here in Amelia Island and uh, it's really is paradise. And I have a great operator at home running Big Fish Contracting, which allows me to be able to do what I want when I want it. And that struggle is real for a lot of people, but um, I wanted a special thanks to Ben Timmons who gifted me a FaceTime access that he bought from Mo Heat. So I got to spend five minutes with Gary yesterday. That was really cool. The Hawk love is real in this community. I don't know if everybody can feel it, but uh, the question I have for you, because I never get to ask too many questions on here, I don't feel like, but I'm starting the content company. I have my first influencer under contract. It's a $250,000 contract. I am struggling a little bit with the workflow and things like that, but on a different, on a different um, note for my own content, like I started the content so I could get my own content done, paid for. How do you take your team stuff that they make for you and then uh, do they send it to you and then do you post it? Or like, I'm trying to have my executive assistant help me with some of this stuff. How particular do you get about every single piece that they make? I know that uh, you Ready? like something, you send it back. Yeah. Here it is. Team Thread, they share things. I pick the one that I like. I copy it. I post it and write the copy on my Instagram and my Twitter, fully me. The other platforms, they take that copy and then distribute it and make a tweak there. So that's the system. And like how often, are they just like, do, do you just like go in for like an hour a day or are they just constantly constant stuff? Like, uh, we're, we're laughing, you, you might, some of you might have saw, like it's a constant flow. We have global creators, like constant. Do you ever find, like I'm trying to do this all, you know, I know there's no such thing as balance in life, you know, but I am trying to spend more time with my baby and my wife. As you should. Yeah, I mean, and I know, and by I'm, the way, I'm trying, but, you're like, I'm ca- also, but I you're also ca- know that I gotta be omnipresent. Yeah. You got it. You're, look, I mean, you're catching me at a time. I went seven years without ever missing the 8.30, 11.30, 3.30, and 7.30 slot, ever. It was like religion. I haven't been able to do that for months right now because I'm two head down with B-Friends and Vayner. 
Like, get, people are like, where'd you find the time? I'm like, Gary Vee. I don't publicly speak anymore. My involvement in the content is way down. But I see you speak every once in a while on stages. I see you in promotions and stuff like that. Here's what happened. I'll give you the numbers. You've seen me, because you're right. I don't speak zero, but in 2018, I spoke 113 times. You know, in 2023, I'll speak seven. I don't know if you see my content. I'm wearing that same fucking yeah, coach. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I watch you do it, and I like the model. How, when I got paid $10,000 to go speak, like a couple months ago. How long does it take me to go from $10,000 to $250,000? How long did it take you? You'll never get there because you're not charismatic enough. Don't tell me I can't do something, bro. I'm trying to help you get there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get there. I'm just curious, like, you know, you just gotta keep up with the price tag and keep making yourself more scarce. I mean, I watch- It's, not about, it's not about scarce. It's back to your point. When I was getting 10K, I was getting four of them. When I did 113, I was doing, I was getting 150K. It wasn't about more scarce, it's about more demand. You know, and you're right, there is right. a supply element to it, but there's so many fucking conferences, like, it's not the scarce yeah. part, it's just, it's, you know, getting people to actually want you. What, my concern with you is, make it slow. Don't try to make it, your number one vulnerability is. Oh, it's slow. Go slow. Oh, it's going slow. I go mean, slow. I've been doing it for a year. Yeah, go slow. Con, I really, like, got out of the day-to-day of the business started the content company, and now I actually have time to like go to conferences and events, talk to people, and a lot of it, you know, I do because you know, I want to get value. But eventually, I want to live this life to where like I can be at a conference at a place like this. I can go do my work, and my family can like go have fun, right? Of so course, that way we can do it all together. It's all but everyone. I appreciate ev- you for inspiring me to do that. Everybody here is trying to find their balance, and we have some good days, some good weeks, some bad weeks, some bad months, some good years. We're all fighting for this balance. And balance is subjective to us, just like beauty. And so like, you know, the big thing that I ask all of you with families and loved ones, don't beat yourself up on a bad day, a bad week, a bad month, a bad year, a bad decade. You can't go into a time machine, do anything about it. You can learn from what you've done and make it better. And so keep that in mind, everyone. Are we gonna are we gonna see you at the hawk party on Wednesday from four to eight at the slippery noodle? Like I said last time, it's one that I'm really trying to make work. I have my meetings on like my time. Um, and my obligations, probably here another week or so, so I'll have a better answer for that soon. All right, buddy. All right, Back. let's keep it going. Thanks so much, Benny. All right, we're gonna move over to Chu. Chu, thanks so much for joining us. Hi. Yep, I have a question with regards to family business. So I'm here in Singapore, and then my dad owns a small stationery business, and then my wife joins uh, my dad's business about five years ago, and then my dad's plan was to actually hand over the business to her, but however, maybe in the last three years, it has become obvious that uh, both my dad and my wife have a bit of communication um, <laughs> issues between them. So my wife is actually not really happy uh, working there right now, but then she doesn't know, doesn't know exactly what she wants to do next. Uh, and of course, my dad is, uh, is quite disappointed about how things turn out. So I'm kind of stuck in between them because of the commercial problems. Sometimes I need to pass messages around and then I'm just wondering what advice would you have? This is a fucking amazing question. And, and, and not the most, you know, I get so much family business questions, Chu. This is a very unusual one, you know, because I've, I've seen like tens of thousands. I've seen, you know, it's your, it's your parents and I've seen a lot of the husband went into the wives business, but the reverse less, but I've seen it, and I've always been interested by it because it's the rarest of the combos. Look, I'll tell you a couple things. First of all, the number one thing you have to protect is the relationships, not the business. It has to be that way, and I know for your father, it's very possible that the business is like a child. My dad's business is like, he loves that more than maybe anything besides you know, me and my mom. I think the business sits before AJ and my sister Liz. Like that, it's like that to him, so I, I don't say that lightly, but I say this, that, and by the way, the only reason I'm ranked about the business is because I built the majority of it. Otherwise, I would have been below it too, so don't get it twisted. You need to get them to communicate in a real way, a, a mediation, therapy, you have to talk it through, you have to. Your wife has to leave the business, has to. And your father has to understand why that's a good thing, not a bad thing. He can't have her live the life he wants, for him, and it's actually beautiful that he wants to leave it to her. Like it's, a, it's actually very nice, but we need to find a different solution. You can't be half pregnant on this. You need to attack this. And what everybody wants to do in these scenarios is put Band-Aids on the issues day in and day out, week out and week out, right? And the reality is you have to cut the cancer. And so you have to go into a very candorous conversation that either you can moderate, 
but I would recommend heavily getting someone that's not you to moderate it because they're neutral. And yeah. you know, if I'm you, I'm paying for them to go to business therapy together. You know what I mean? Because they both have to say three or four things that they need to say to each other from a resentment standpoint, and then I think things mm-hmm. will get better. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Let's go over to Adam. Adam, so good to see you. Gary, how are you going? I'm going well, Adam. How are you? Uh, so this is more for everybody here. I mean, as a keynote koala, we obviously get to spend a shitload of time together. And yes, I've sir. Plenty out of that. Yes. Um, talking about patience, uh, we just went through a four-year software certification journey. I actually got the certification last night which now means going live in Ohio and New Jersey in the summer Wow! for a new sports betting company is actually real now. Wow. Um, so Congratulations, that's a big deal. Thanks. I know we'd spoken about doing something uh, when I'm getting ready for New Jersey, which I'll hit up DRock and we can line that up. Yep. But just really for everybody else, you know, if you have small businesses or anything in Ohio and New Jersey, um, you know, we're not looking to be DraftKings fans, you'll spend hundreds of millions of dollars just torching it across the board. We're actually looking to do real partnerships with, again, New Jersey, obviously Wine Library is a key one, you know, because of the age that matches yep. with betting and alcohol. Yep. Um, we've actually partnered, our uh, skin partner is Spire Academy, which is actually a academy in the, on Lake Erie in Ohio. I haven't been yep. up there yet, so I plan to go up and have a look in May. Uh, the week before VCon, actually. Um, so I mean, that's really you know, I love it. it for me. Is just put, why don't, Adam? Why don't you put? Yeah. Stuff. Why don't you put your email in the chat right now? It seems like yeah, there's one or I'll two people that might. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh, you know, I've actually just signed up with uh, Big Fish to do a uh, podcast with him and that's start awesome. giving some of those uh, keynote awesome. experiences. Uh, you know, and just share it with your community. I it's, love it, uh, brother. It's been something special. Uh, thank you, man. It's always good to see you. I love like I could be we're all over the world, and there you are. It's just so fun. <laughs> all right, good luck. <clears throat> Talk to you soon. Thanks so much, Adam. Let's move over to Thep. Thep, good to see you. You're on me to go for it. Hello, Gary. How are you? I'm well, Thep. Great to see you. Um, first of all, I would like to say that uh, in the last few uh, last few hangout talks session, uh, you asked me to email you. But I did email you, but there wasn't a reply. So Thep, I what's the you. what's what's the email? Let me look right now. Can I type it? Can you type can it in right here, it? so I can copy it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, brother. Thep, if I'm reading this right, are we are you in the mindset of trying to get a job in APAC or some or in this industry in some way? Yes. Actually, okay. Yes. So yes. here's what I can do. I can definitely get you in. It. So I just replied to you. Now you can reply back, and we'll get this moving. I can definitely you. move you, you know, we get probably 10,000 resumes at APEC, Vayner, a month, but I will personally bump it all the way to the top and make sure that you get an interview. I can't force the team there to hire you as much as I love you, because that's just inappropriate, but I will definitely co-sign them for the consideration and then it's up to you. The good news is, I was just there, as you know, and APAC is exploding for us and we're gonna be hiring a lot of young talent in the next 12 to 18 months, so the timing is good. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I bought with friend, like V1 from the starting. Yep. So, but, but I didn't get to go VCon last year because there was a problem. So I'm planning for the next year. Yes. I'd like to ask that, like, what's your opinion? Like, if... I know, I know sometimes you don't want to talk about it, but I just want to know, like, for the Recon ticket, like, if, is it, is it, like, for collectible, right? Like, after, if it's, after we don't use it or something like that. Yeah, I mean, that was the reason I wanted Chromie Squiggles to be the art on it, because I knew how sought after that world was. You know, my hope is, like, the, the NFL, like the World Cup, if we went to eBay right now and typed in World Cup tickets, Ticket stubs from the 60s and 70s, you know, and 82 and all those, they have some sort of demand. I'd like to build the best intellectual property of this generation. I'm gonna do it for the next 50 years. I don't know what the prices are gonna be along the way, but I, between A, really trying to go for that and understanding how collecting works, and B, being able to use the blockchains to potentially create utility, I'm excited about them, but I don't wanna stop anyone here from selling it if they wanna sell it and so that's the best I can answer at this point. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, I have something more. Actually, uh, before COVID, I was uh, like, I did property in Thailand. 
right? As a, like public consultant, public consultant, and then uh, COVID hits, and then I, uh, I did. I mean, I study course in digital marketing. Yeah, um, I would like to ask that. Uh, what's your recommendation for uh, for content creating content for like property? Yeah, I mean, I I think it's a huge space. My my sister's a real estate agent. I think that the content around the neighborhood that the home's in, the content around the home, like it's one of the biggest spaces. If you go to TikTok right now and type in, you know, homes for sale, homes, like you'll see unlimited example step of things that work. Hashtag real estate, you'll see it. It's everywhere and Thailand's coming back heavily now and you should take a look. All right, Federico, we're gonna try one more time on the audio issues if you wanna try unmuting. Now? Perfect, do you hear me? Yes, sir. Hi, Gary, how are you? Very good. from Italy. It's a pleasure. So at the end of last year, I did what your uh, friend Matt Higgins called Bird the Boat, and I decided to transition from finance to sports. I want to become the best football soccer executive uh, in the world by 2030, and I started to post every day on LinkedIn. I posted for the last 120 days, and uh, something uh, unbelievable uh, happened in the sense that I started to receive proposals from all over the world. Go figure. India. Well, go figure. Go figure. Keep going. By the way, you know, you started doing that. You know what I started doing? I started doing push-ups and this happened. Yes. You know, it's funny what happens when you actually do the work. No, but I mean, something crazy. I got asked from an Indian university to join the board. I got contacted by FIFA to start an amazing project. Kids from everywhere, Africa, India, Europe, America, write me to say what can I do in sports, etc. And I also been contacted by an online sports school. They want me to join as a shareholder because they want to, of course, I can give courses to athletes. That's my passion. I don't know the exchange, how much of shares they should give me. Ask for 100%. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Do you know how many times people gave me 10% consulting advisory shares and then I gave it back because after four years I realized I was too busy and I didn't help and I gave it back because I wanted them to be happy. Great. That's so good news. Solution. Ask for 20%, know in your brain and your heart that if you don't earn that, that you can give it back and now you've solved your problem. Okay, yeah, great, thanks. You're welcome. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Uh, Gary. Yes. And uh, how, just, uh, how to leverage this popularity on LinkedIn? What should I do next? It's happening. It's post every day? Yeah, it's happening. Or add right? another platform like, I yes. don't know, because TikTok. my vision, TikTok. I can really, People love TikTok. Vision. TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Add TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Figure it out the way you figured out LinkedIn, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Love you. One more. Bye. Perfect. We're going to sneak one in here. Dr. Malachi O'Brien, good to <laughs> see you. My man. Thank you for being here. <laughs> hey, good to be back. Gary, thank you for getting me in for the last question. Just finished 153 marathons, so glad to be back. Um, Insane. Gary, here's my question, because this kind of happened to me just last week. What do you do personally when you face maybe a major setback with a client? Something happens, they end a contract, it feels like a punch in the gut. Um, how, do you move, how do you move forward mentally? And then how do you move forward pragmatically to regain the momentum and keep pressing ahead? Because those hurt at times, but you've got to keep pressing ahead. So what do you do, what do you think through? Um, first, I've got to, first thing I think through, and it happens all the time, is can we afford to not fire anyone? That's usually my first move. Ben, are you showing Beanie Babies on screen? Um, So that's number one, uh, Doc. Number two, I realize that it's completely a subjective call. Right? So I don't take it personal. When I tell you I don't take it personal, I don't take it personal. That's been hard for me already because part of me loved the client. Now I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I don't want that in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit to have anything against them. You shouldn't. With that. They, yeah. You should be grateful that they ever hired you in the first place. Don't become entitled. You're, sure, in, no you're, you're in control of that. Like when, <laughs> when people in this community are upset with me, I take on accountability. I didn't have to say and get hyped in Discord. I could have just cruised into the sunset. I didn't have to issue tickets that created the ability for them to go down. Vcon's a joke at this price. I didn't have to do that. Like when people are mad at you, or upset with you, or do something that upsets you, take on accountability, Doc. They didn't probably want to fire you. They probably can save money in a way, they need to cut money, maybe your team is not doing a good enough job in their subjective opinion. You know, just convert it from anger to accountability. 
and that immediately takes you on to the next chapter because how do you move forward? You have no choice. What do you, you can sell the company, shut it down, or you move forward. Awesome. Right? No, just, uh, that's what I figured you would say because obviously 12 and a half, but that, I wanted to hear you say it and that's helpful. You know, what, what has been the biggest setback you've ever faced in your career? In this, in this version? Yeah, in this version. I mean, it, we, had, we, we just lost eight figures from last week. They decided to consolidate with the big company because our key executive left and the old guard wanted the old stuff. Monster hit, monster. Wow. <laughs> so, hey, thanks, thanks honestly for everything, Gary. Yeah. Seriously, in all these years, Always, the brother. content, our interaction, I'm grateful, seriously, and that yeah. helped. And just to, to help everybody because I see people reacting to it, I, first thing I did was like, can we afford to save everyone's job? It looks like we could-ish. And that's the biggest concern I have. Now it's, like I haven't thought about it since until this moment. Like I'm like fully tomorrow, like I can't, actually you'll even find this more gracious. I'm focused on doing great work for them in the next eight weeks so that everybody sees we're stand up people as we off board and try to set up the incumbents to be successful with everything we've learned. What are you gonna do, right? Look, it's the, it's the same reason I'm so confident about this project. I don't control everything and I made missteps, but like, I have my whole life to make it good. It's fun. I also know I'm competing with a lot of people that aren't in that mindset. That should work itself out nicely for us. So, I appreciate all of you. Thank you.